Welcome to our video series on cellular respiration. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you to do a few things. Don't be a passive learner. Have paper and pencil handy. Pause the video frequently. Rewind and rewatch. Draw your own pictures, because as you know, pictures are your friends. And ask questions. Go ahead, write them down. Research the answers. And to really test your understanding, teach it to someone else in your own words. And if you want, you can leave questions in the comment sections below, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Now let's get started. I decided to make this a three-part series. In part one, we'll do an introduction to cell respiration and the details of glycolysis. That's what you're watching now. Then in part two, we'll take a closer look at the Krebs cycle. And in part three, we'll look at electron transport phosphorylation. Watch these three videos in sequence. I'll have links for these uh, second two at the end of this video. And then after you're finished with that series, check out my video on fermentation. We'll look at a different way of getting the energy out of glucose. All right, in our last video series, we looked at photosynthesis, how we could take the energy of sunlight and put it into the bonds of glucose to make our cellular fuel. So what we need to do in this video is figure out how we get this energy back out. We need to turn photosynthesis around so we can see respiration. We're going to get the energy back out of glucose in a form called ATP. So when we look at this overall equation, we're taking glucose uh, in the presence of oxygen and we're going to break it apart into carbon dioxide and water to liberate energy in the form of molecule ATP, approximately 36 of them. So their respiration is going to occur in three stages. The first stage is called glycolysis. It's an anaerobic stage that takes place in the cytoplasm. The products of glycolysis will enter the mitochondria where the second and third stages of respiration occur. The second stage of respiration is called the Krebs cycle. It's preceded by a preparatory step and is a series of reactions that occur in the mitochondria that are often referred to as a citric acid cycle because the first intermediate made is citrate or citric acid. And the final stage of respiration is electron transport phosphorylation. It takes place deep inside the mitochondria. It's a series of enzymes embedded in the inner membrane called the electron transport chain. It's this stage of respiration that's aerobic and that will produce the majority of our ATP. Now let's take a look at where this occurs. Here we have a cell. I want to zoom in on some important organelles. The mitochondria. Whoops, there we go, the mitochondria. Let's take a closer look at these mitochondria. The mitochondria is often referred to as a cell's power plant. It's the primary site of cellular respiration where we're going to recapture the energy from those high energy bonds of glucose. And you'll notice that the mitochondria is a double membrane bound organelle, and it's across this inner membrane where a lot of our action is going to occur. We'll come back to the mitochondria later because the first stages of respiration, glycolysis, occurs out here in the cytoplasm. Now let's keep in mind what it is we're trying to do. We're trying to make ATP. So we need to talk about how ATP is actually made. It turns out there are two ways to make ATP. Substrate level phosphorylation and electron transport phosphorylation, which is driven by chemiosmosis. Now let's look at what substrate level phosphorylation looks like. In substrate level phosphorylation, a substrate uh, directly hands an ADP, a phosphate, to become ATP. Let's watch that again. We have substrate level phosphorylation ATP. DP was phosphorylated into ATP with a direct transfer of a phosphate group. So we call this substrate level phosphorylation. The substrate donates the phosphate. In electron transport phosphorylation, ATP is driven, production is driven by a chemiosmotic gradient, the flow of protons through a special channel protein that we call ATP synthase. So let's get started with glycolysis. Remember that glycolysis is anaerobic and it occurs in the cytoplasm and we're going to start with glucose. And in the first step of glycolysis, glucose is split uh, with the energy from ATP. And this is interesting because we're trying to make ATP, but in the first step, we actually consume two ATP to split glucose into two molecules called PGAL, or phosphoglyceraldehyde. So in our first step, we take a six carbon molecule and split it into two three carbon PGALs. And it's going to cost us two ATP. We call this our energy investment stage. We spend 2 ATP to make 2 PGL. 
Now these two PJL molecules are used to reduce NAD plus in NADH. And in doing so, the um, PJL are converted into BPGA, or biphosphoglycerate. Now these two molecules of NADH are carrying for us high energy electrons. They're very similar to the electron carriers NADPH that we saw in photosynthesis, but obviously minus a phosphate, so it's NADH. But these two molecules have a lot of energy left in them. They're carrying those high energy electrons, and that's energy we can tap into later. Let's look at it again. The two PJL that we have at the end of the first step of glycolysis reduce NAD plus to NADH, which is carrying for us high energy electrons and hydrogen that we'll send to the electron transport chain to get energy out of later. We can add that to our metabolic pathway for that next step. So now we have BPGA, or biphosphoglycerate. Let's look what happens to those molecules. The BPGA will phosphorylate ADP into ATP, and BPGA becomes PGA, or phosphoglycerate. And these ATP were made by substrate level phosphorylation. And let's add that to our flow chart here. So the BPGA phosphorylate ADP into ATP, becoming phosphoglycerate. The two phosphoglycerate then phosphorylate another two ADP into two more ATP, again by substrate level phosphorylation. And we end with two molecules of pyruvate. So let's finish this out. The two, P, the two PGAs phosphorylate ADP into ATP, producing two pyruvate. So in this second stage, we've made four ATP. So we call this our energy return stage. We have a net profit of two ATP. We spin two, we make four. We also have these two NADH molecules that are carrying energy that we've yet to tap into. So let's summarize glycolysis. Again, it's anaerobic, it doesn't require oxygen, it takes place in the cytoplasm. We have an energy investment step of 2 ATP, but an energy return of 4 for a net yield or profit of 2 ATP. We also produce 2 NADH molecules, which will go onto the electron transport chain, and we end with 2 pyruvate molecules, which will go onto the crest. So again, we're looking at our flow chart. The products of glycolysis um, besides this 4 ATP that we're after, after a profit of 2, the other two products, the NADH and the pyruvate, we're not done with. These pyruvates still have energy in them that we're going to get in, uh, tap into in the Krebs cycle, and the NADH have energy in them that we'll tap into in the electron transport chain. Finally, let's finish with a little accounting. Let's see, here's the overall reaction for respiration, and we've accomplished so far just glycolysis. So let's take into account what we have and have not done yet. And let me grab a pen here. Um, so, we use glucose. Check. We're done with that. We've yet to use um, oxygen, and we've yet to make carbon dioxide, and we've yet to make water. But we have made some ATP, uh, but only two. So we have approximately 34 ATP left to make. So, where's the energy for those ATP? Well, hopefully you can see that we've yet to tap into these molecules, and so that's where we're going to go next. We obviously still have a long way to go to get through this whole process. So that does it for our first part, glycolysis. Uh, click on this link right here for the Krebs cycle as we move through this series on cellular respiration.